T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another <laughs> episode of the Mid Heaven Podcast with your favorite Hermes Hades combo, the Peace Obviously. Stealer. Um, In the flesh. You go by the Peace Stealer. Am I beyond the veil? Yeah. The few times people have recognized me, which, by the way, was in Costco or Target. People were like, oh my god, are you beyond the veil? I'm like, that's not my fucking name, bitch. No. <laughs> that's not my name, but thanks anyway. <laughs> I Whatever. Love it. My, I, I love it. Does it matter what my name is? I mean, not on these internet. My name streets. is what? <laughs> I was about to make a slim shady reference, but I don't know the rest of the song, so I don't give a fuck. Welcome back. My name is Oh right, right, right. Sick it, pick it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about that because of Super yeah. Bowl and everything and all those old pieces oh, yeah. of shit that are from hip hop that were I love that I forgot about that that were rapping I loved sending you all the Super Bowl memes yo they were hilarious you know what I, I've been recognized at Circle K I've been recognized were you buying a Swisher suite oh my god I think I was that day <laughs> what else did <laughs> you mean at Circle K <laughs> like, unless you're even... buying a fucking I don't even a, buy Swishers like that anymore, but that was in the era where I was buying Swishers every other day. Nice. I was recognized in Walmart and at the strip club at a, a Spearmint Rhino. And both times he was night. probably in sweats. Fuck. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> two for two. Damn it. The Actually, Walmart in Circle K, yes. Oh my God. That was slip, like, were you wearing slides with socks too? No. You're a real piece of shit. You're real. I, not that day, but I do. I, it was, it's not uncommon back then. I love it life. when men wear slides with socks. You mean because like, I'm right, like yeah. you really don't give a fuck, do, a do fuck. you? Yeah. You really don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's it's wow. I That's like my that. favorite outfit too. But when I wear it, I'm a slob apparently. I like going out looking homeless. I like, I like a bum. I really enjoy it. Um, You're all about that. Those creature comforts. Yeah. You like pockets to hold your snacks. I'd be feeling like. Never mind, I'm not going to say that. Yes, I do like... Feeling like what? I'll be feeling like, you know, Brad Pitt trying to, like, hide his identity, but it's not like people recognize me anyway. Does Brad Pitt do that? My youngest sister, uh, my Scorpio sister, ran into Brad Pitt in Burger King trying to hide his identity. and and I would be too. That's embarrassing. Why are you going to Burger King? He bought her some Burger King because, uh, you know, he's like, don't tell anybody, but... You know, they did and, and whatnot. And she still did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed in Burger King. Take your ass over to In-N-Out. What are you doing? Uh, in and out No, he'd probably be recognized by that. Actually, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, n- not like a... I, li- I love being a Z-list celebrity, but I would say... I, Z-list celebrity. I just like to hide my Venus in the 12th because I don't want my beauty to shine. So I just don't make myself up. I have Venus opposed Jupiter. So you're going to see me like made up or you're going to see me looking homeless as fuck. I love it. Spumming it in some sweats, Woo. some Coors Light shirts. Yeah, okay. um, we're here today to talk to you about some more conspiracy type astrology. So I hope all of you guys have your alcoholic beverages ready. Mm-hmm. Cheers again. Thank How's you. that schmuck? Mm. How's that schmuckish schmuck? It's good. In fact, I just kind of want to give us our own flowers because a lot of stuff we said about Everything we said everything, has happened, everything, actually. actually. I'm not yeah. going to be humble. Yeah. Everything, everything we've told you guys yeah. has happened. It's not self-proclaimed, too. There's a lot of people, you know, letting us know our, accurate, our predictions are accurate, especially around, like, 2022, phasing out everything that's happened 2020, we call that. So that's pretty cool to see a lot of states rolling back mandates and countries, too, and... I like that you mentioned earlier, it's, you know, you said psych because like that's rolling out, but we're getting ready for a whole new cycle of whatever else they're going to put. Yeah, phase three of end of the world type bullshit. Basically. So So we're here to talk to you guys a little bit about what our insights are for what's next for America Mm -hmm. in the immediate near future. So we talked about the Pluto return, not so much a focus on that. Now it's like, you know, here as we're filming this, it's mid-February, so we're seeing the rollback of vax mandates, the rollback of mask mandates. Um, people are being able to travel a little bit more freely. Australia's like, people can fly in now. Like other countries are like, we're fucking wide open. 
So we want to talk to you about maybe what the next couple months look like um, in regards to that. Mike referenced me saying psych. Um, I think a lot of that is just Jupiter sex tell Uranus and people becoming more optimistic about freedom and having fun and traveling, especially in America's third and fifth house. Um, or maybe the freedom or the, um, the uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like the, the possibility of freedom or the, the fakeness of fake freedom is being promoted, especially within the third and the fifth house axis. It's like, we can have fun again. We can go out. The kids are going to be free. Everything's going to be fine. But we're going to run into some actually pretty heavy conjunctions to Saturn and Aquarius and how that may actually materialize um, in a Placidus and in a whole sign house sense. I mean, Placidus, it's going to be in the second. So, you know, economically, we're still in for a bit of a rough time. Um, oh, yeah. Whole sign, that would be third. So that's still limitation in terms of communication, traveling, documents, freedom of speech. And just to speak a little bit about financially, that 12th house aspect to me looks like us not being aware of what's happening financially mm. until after the fact mm -hmm. and having to cope with that. Hopefully not in the form of a crash, but yeah, it's still interesting nonetheless. I'd be interested in what America's annual perfection year is right now. Right. Can we can we get somebody who can pull up a calculator for me really quick? Can you calculate for me um, 2021 subtract 1776? 245, can you divide that by 12? Okay, so it's annual perfection year 20, right? Which is what, uh, 12... Then is that a 10th house year? 20, because, oh, because it's rounds to 20. I actually don't know how to calculate So perfection. 12th house year is 12 and then 24. So if you go four back from that, what oh, is that? Oh, that's what you're asking. Okay. Is it the, that would be the ninth house. So is that it a ninth a house year? Because 12, yeah, you're right. Plus I think eight. it's a ninth house year. Can you hand me my laptop? I just want to confirm really quick. Um, because I think that's going to tell us a lot, actually. I've got, I'm not a whole sign astrologer, and I'm not even a Hellenistic astrologer, but I'm going to tell you something. Maybe an a eighth house perfection year. Is it? 20? Tw 20 minus 12 is 8. Maybe it is 8. So. I'm going to confirm. <laughs> if we're in an eighth I should, house perfection I should year. know this because, um, you know, astrology is partially connected to math and geometry. Yeah. Uh, so 20 relates to, no, it's a ninth house year. Nine. And then it'll become a 10th house year in July. Wait, 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 wait. It's a ninth house? Oh, okay, because eight, yeah. ninth. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha, yeah. gotcha. 20. So it's a ninth house annual perfection year, and in the summer it'll become a 10th house. Mm. Ninth house is the sun. So which... 2020 was when it was an eighth house perfection year. Mm -hmm. So our a Scorpio president was elected during an eighth house perfection year. That's terrifying. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So if we're in an eighth house year, uh, excuse me, a ninth house year, right. ninth house year, um, we're ruled by the sun. So we get really affected by transits to the sun or eclipses. Um, so we have eclipses that are going to start back again the end of April, beginning of May. Mm -hmm. That'll be a turning point. Um, ninth house is more about travel, foreign travel, legality, philosophy, religion, um, education, higher education. But I think the court systems, especially because the sun rules the ninth and is located in the seventh. So I think we're going to see lots of changes revolving around like laws and rules and regulations and stuff. Um, but the eclipses are going to roll things in. Then next year, when we move into our annual perfection year 10, which will be in July, that is going to really highlight Mercury, which I think is really fascinating because we're seeing Mercury really activated. You guys have seen that in the solar return that we did. You've seen that in the Pluto return that we did. Yeah. So business. Mars and Venus are 17. I feel like that conjunction started something. What do you think about that? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Mars and Venus are kind of... Turn away from You see, like, Mars and Venus, they're kind of going... They're following each other. They're neck and neck. And they've been like that really for, like, the last two weeks. It's really started kind of heating up. Um, and it's going to be that way all the way through Pisces until Venus finally starts to pull ahead. And, um, well, actually Aquarius. Then Venus is really going to start to pull ahead after those Saturn conjunctions. But... How do I feel about them conjuncting in the second house? I mean... 
that is some turbulent stuff that is coming when you're highlighting the sixth house and the twelfth house ruler in a conjunction to Pluto. That tells me that there is going to be unforeseen circumstances that are going to come about that's going to affect health, um, the service industry, stuff relating to, um, I think, uh, the, uh, yeah, service industry in general, probably food. I mean, because it's happening in the second house, resources, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like the mask mandates and stuff, I've been really hesitant because this Jupiter sextile Uranus is very like, anything's possible. Like everything's yeah. open again. Like it's great. Don't even worry. You can go places, buy your tickets. But once we start getting ahead and we start seeing planets coming into conjunction with Saturn, like the Mercury-Saturn conjunction right around the beginning of March, um, I think is going to paint a very different circumstance and we're actually going to find that there's new limitations revolving around local travel or documents or um, media or anything revolving around freedom of speech. So I, I, I'm not saying the masks are necessarily going to come back. I actually have this intuitive feeling that whatever the master plan was to scare people into thinking that this is going to continue mm. backfired. Yeah. So the next wave, I think, of really what's coming in March and in April, when we see these conjunctions happen with Saturn, is going to be, oh, we have to limit what you can uh, see on the internet. We have to limit right. what you can buy. We have to ration things. Um, we can't allow you to travel freely. There's environmental concerns. We don't want you to fly freely. <laughs> Like the next, the next basically we're, we're right. going to level up. There's something yeah. else coming. There's going to be some orchestrated other kind of fear. And thankfully there's been so much analysis based on the past two years that, and, and at least if we think of it objectively, like where based on what happened, we know what more protocol to evolve and the shadow or right. light of that, you know, comes through. But yeah, I think that's spot on. And, and as soon as Pisces, Aries season, we'll get a sneak peek. Of Because uh, a lot of this is tied with Jupiter and Aries. And Jupiter and Aries in a short amount of time is going to give us a good idea of the new technology, the new culture, the new cycle we're going to step self into. Self-sustainment. 2023. Yep. Self-sustainment. You know, sure. Jupiter and Aries. How am I educating myself? Mm -hmm. How am I getting around? You know, how do I travel? How do I educate myself? How do I learn? How do I expand? Um, Self-sustainability is going to be a big thing. Yep. You know, Uranus is going to be second to this placement, so it's going to revolve around uh, resources, revolving around educating yourself with what's going on economically and where to put your money and what to do with it, having more control mm -hmm. over it, yeah. um, growing your own food, starting your own business. Um, when we start to realize that um, we're not really out of the woods yet, and as much as I want to be optimistic, I, I, I read some of the comments for the, the U.S. Pluto return, and everybody was like, Okay, this is pretty dark and scary. I think it's going to get pretty bad. Yeah, no shit. Mm. You know, I mean, but um, I think really what it's going to do is it's going to show people where <clears throat> the expectations, the limitations, the tax implications, all of the other things that are coming from working for the man mm. is going to really um, kind of give us this quantum leap. Jupiter Uranus is like quantum leaps into the future and going, what else can I do so I can be more, you know, self-reliant, whether that's a side hustle and you're selling on Etsy or it ends up materializing as getting a certification and educating yourself to be able to do something and do things on your own, especially when it comes to health and fitness. I think that's going to be a huge turning point because Jupiter's ingress into Aries, Mars ingress into Aries. I think we're going to see a lot of coaches, physical trainers, people who are moving away from gyms, moving into exercising on their own, traveling yeah. on their own, backpacking might be pretty prominent. I think we're going to see new ways of um, just sharing our experiences um, very that are very personal in a different capacity. So I don't necessarily think the masks are going to come back. Mm -mm. That's the feeling that I'm getting because I think that's been so overplayed. And just the fact that at least some of the more recent news and data that's coming out is like making us realize like the masks weren't really doing anything. Which they knew, but... They're lowering our immune system. They're fucking yeah. little kids up psychologically and health-wise. Um, but there's something else coming. And it, it's, it's 
it, it's an interesting thing because when planets square the nodes, it's like the universe's way of saying, okay, we're doing this now. It's like mm. the music scratches mm -hmm. and you change from polka over, over. to fucking salsa. Yeah. And you gotta learn how to salsa really quick. And on the spot too, like, oh, this is what we're doing now, okay. It's almost as if the masks were masking what they You mean prepared. 5G technology and the fact that robots are about to take over our jobs? And hey, And that it's there's done. new uh, social rollouts and all kinds of things. Those Lots things of social rollouts. That sure. uh, they're going to start taxing us up the ass Controlled for opposition. Oh, having tax gas. South Node Scorpio. Yeah, for having gas-fueled vehicles. I mean, they're going to come out, I'm assuming, in the next couple of months and basically be like, it's the end of the world. We have to save the environment. We're going to tax you guys for this, for that, for this, for that, because money ain't free. All the stimulus checks you guys got got to come from somewhere. Mm. With this focus in pushing us into a more kind of digital form of money and resources, I think they're going to, I think major banks are going to offer new digital wallets. And I would say, don't fucking do it. Um, mm. And then I also think that there's going to be incentive that they're going to create because of the taxes to say, Where? go and buy electric vehicles, mm. right? Because they're realizing that there is a shortage probably of resources naturally or the fact that they can't continue to fund wars because of oil. Um, so they have to create an energy crisis. North Node is in Taurus. And Uranus is going to conjunct the North Node. Everybody's going to be like up in arms being like, oh, it's so expensive. So they're going to create this crisis to force us into new ways of being or harvesting our energy from our own For personal sure. bodies. That's. I love that you mentioned... Um digital banks because shout out to Jax he was talking to me about how there's this thing called like hollow coin and like it's the introduction of a coin that has no fees uh, to be paid through and they're, they're kind of rebranding around that so that'll change the game uh, and that I'm only saying that because of the, of the decentralized block coin or like hollow chain like people might just decide to create their own banks you have to understand something it's been hundreds of years with centralized banking Hundreds of years yeah. where we, people have been getting fucked like oh, people yeah. who have started the system <laughs> Way back in the day way way before Wells Fargo and all their fucking shit <laughs> That just essentially we've been getting fucked We're so used to other people controlling our money yeah, and deposits and how much so money weird. we spend and what it costs for transactions oh. that the system has been designed this way to basically suppress most everybody so the rich keep getting richer and there's this division that's going to go on this year that I think people are going to start realizing that actually everything that's happened over the next two years is just to have more control and to force consumerism even yeah. more into people to accepting less and having uh, just a lower standard of life and lifestyle. Mm. And um, we're going to see that people are going to go one of two very separate ways with um, a bunch of planets coming into conjunction with Saturn where it wants to go towards the future and then we're going to see conjunctions that are going to happen in eclipses in Taurus, which is like, no, we want to stay in the real world. And you're, you're going to see people who are going to go off and they're going to want to join Meta and they're going to want to do all that stuff. I mean, I think of, I saw recently like, you know, uh, McDonald's went and bought a bunch of stores, set up stores in Meta. Oh, wow. So you can go into the Metaverse, order your fucking Big Mac and fries, and it's delivered to your house. But you're still gonna have to take off your goggles and eat that shit and cry and jerk off and then go back into the metaverse. Harass. What kind of a life is that? This is still a meta life. <laughs> That's terrifying to me. That's I feel like this is the beginning of the end, especially when yeah. I think Oh of yes, that's 2023, turning to Pluto and Aqua. Everybody who has all the younger children who have Uranus or Neptune mm -hmm. in Aquarius or in Pisces who are already have been having this period of time where they have had this limitation in social structure and they're living through screens. And like, I talk to clients who have kids, who are parents, who yeah. their kids have full blown mental breakdowns wow. when you take away their iPad or their video games. No way. So these kids are already being groomed to just consume, 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 watch, be through a screen, not pay attention. And I feel like the future is um, quite scary and call me a conspiracy theorist, but. I'm convinced now on the other side of this two years of a pandemic that the last two years have been orchestrated and set up because some of our jobs, our technology are all going to be advanced. 5G is rolling out. There's all kinds of stuff that's being set up where we are upgrading and people probably would have fought this had they known that it was going to brick their phones or that they were going to have to evolve or yeah. get digital currency 
or that they were going to have to make massive changes in the way that they live their life. People are going to realize come this summer, thousands of jobs will never be replaced. Thousands because of AI and new technologies yeah, and things that are coming Saturn in. Saturn Aquarius, which that happened the last time Saturn was in Aquarius too, a proliferation of a whole new workforce and like just an emerging economy. Was that 93? Economy. Yeah, 91, 92, 93. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the dot com era. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, everything went online Snoop and then Dogg we started. has death row records on NFT now. So why is he rolling that out? Why so, is he. Who, did Dre give him. Suge Knight is in prison. Oh. So Snoop Dogg owns uh, Death Row, and it's now an oh. NFT uh, thing. Huh. It's pretty cool. Well, blockchain's going to end up being mm -hmm. more than just crypto. People sure. hear blockchain and they yeah. think crypto, but That's the more true. that I'm learning about it, I'm realizing, like, actually, this may be the, like, the 2.0, 3.0 of the fucking internet. internet. Yeah. And that it's going to eventually evolve into what can be, like, decentralized spaces for content. And everything she's saying, you're gonna see official post 2030 with Saturn Uranus when that cycle kind of like officializes it. I think everything in, in Gemini, right? In Gemini, right. So everything leading up to there is like ending the old cycle and like bringing these new ideas. And we're to born play. with Saturn Uranus. And then go, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So and that creates it's gonna a go quick cancer to too. Capricorn. So I yeah. think, of, wow. They're gonna travel together into Cancer. So. What's Hello, kind of you're in his opposition. opposition. In Sagittarius and in Cap, y'all are next up. So that's that's it. That's very interesting, dude. Ah. You know what I was thinking long. about? I'm so excited because I was thinking about like who are the generations that are really going to help us right now. So this is like a call to the Pluto Uranus in Virgo people. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are messes, but I love you. We fucking need you right it's now. So <laughs> we real. need you to get through your crisis. They're the Help last us. of the real right now. Because like, you guys, you know, for, I love Pluto and Leo. You guys are done. To late 16th, you guys are oh done. God, Half of you guys yeah. are either having ego deaths or you're having heart attacks. God bless you. But Pluto, Leo, 40s, Pluto in Virgo, 40s, you guys are really benefiting from all these Pluto trines, the Jupiter opposition. Like, we really need your help Virgo, because 60, you guys are going to help us um, organize everything and get everything going for the future, especially helping the younger generations. Mm -hmm. The Pluto in Libra, you guys have really been going through some massive change, but you're really coming into learning how to partner more so this year. Um, Pluto Libra has gone through some crazy some shit. shit. Oh my god! Especially, I think about those who have like the Jesus Saturn um, Jupiter conjunction. What is that in the early '80s? And yeah. then people who have the late uh, Saturn. Uh, no, not Saturn. That have the um, just the the late conjunction of Libra. I can't remember who it is. Is it '83? Mm. '82, '83. '83 has Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and and Sag. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Well, next gnarly. up is the the I'm I'm really excited to start seeing what the um, Saturn, Uranus, and Sag people start doing. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. Interesting. So this Definitely is like so the awesome. the eighty. 86, 86, 87, 87 yeah. um, because you guys are going to start receiving the Jupiter squares and also Jupiter is going to conjunct Neptune. So you're going from the beliefs and the philosophy to actually creating new reality and yeah. lots of like art and creative stuff. But it's like, oh, my God, man, some of, some of the stuff that's coming, I don't think people would realize the goal. When people say the goalposts are going to keep changing, the goalposts are going to keep changing yeah. where maybe in a couple months it's not even about COVID anymore. Mm -mm. It's going to be about the environment. It's going to be about politics. Climate it's going to be about climate mm -hmm. control, uh, um, more issues with the supply chain. I think shit really starts to hit the fan, to be honest with you, closer to July and August. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, can yeah. we look at that? That's going to be like opposing a lot of what we're going through now. Because everything happening now is still just planting the seeds. So by August and September, it's harvesting all of that. Well, and, and the Pluto return response. is happening very much again that in too. July because it's yeah. retrograding back. So actually, yeah. you know, once the Pluto retrograde happens, which looks like it's happening more in what? April? Mm. May? Yeah, so it's going to be happening end of April, beginning of May. It, that's when it's like, oh, we integrate whatever shit has blown up. Mm. So until Pluto goes direct again, which looks like that's not going to happen. Yeah, until closer to October. That's going to be an interesting period, man. 
you know, from May to October, because then October is going to come in hot and it's going to really be orchestrating change. And at that point, um, we, I'm concerned about seeing Saturn square the nodes roughly again in the fall and the return of the Saturn Uranus squares, because I think we're going to see more supply chain issues, but I also think we're going to see more of like this kind of gridlock stuff. Like I've said all along, we will get to the beginning of 2023 with the Mercury retrograde. And we're going to be like, we're in the same situation that we were a year ago. It's just, I think we're going to see with that square, a Wall Street bets thing again, but one that actually does more than the first one that was kind of like a joke. The whole thing is being fucking manipulated right now. Yeah. Like putting your money into the stock market feels like putting your money into like a fucking slot machine. Mm. You know, that, yeah. I mean, that's just to me, that's just what it feels like. I don't necessarily know if it's... Well, I mean, I just feel like there is going to be an inevitable crash. I just don't know when. I don't think It'll it's be an be orchestrated long. crash. Okay, Best yeah. believe those motherfuckers are going to get their money out first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way it's been happening with crypto. I'm convinced don't, that crypto don't, has don't, been don't. suppressed because we, as it stands right now, I really think that we're going to find out in the next couple of months that banks are fucked. They're underwater. And, and we're not finding out about it until down the line. And at that point in time... That's that balsamic phase with all the cap in aqua and the aqua and, cap and Pisces. It's going to take until Pisces season for all that to clear. And then coming into Aries, Taurus, it's all going to become clear in Gemini because then we won't have any more balsamic phases. Yeah. Everything's moving forward and we'll be like, oh, this is what's been happening in the shadows. Like, damn. So it's, it's all happening now, though. That's the thing. So do you think that it's true what some people are saying, that there's going to be, like, coops in some, like, governments and, like, yeah. there's going to be people who infiltrate and, like, go in and, like, pull a bunch of people out and they're going to reinstate, like, new people and, like, Absolutely. bring in new rulers? I mean, this, is, in theory, is supposed to start happening, like, within the next two months. I feel like it's already happening, but by then it'll come, it'll start to come out of what's been happening. I totally believe some form of that is occurring in every government. And... That'll be really interesting because now we're in an age where most governments have their hands in every other government. So what happens in one country is going to affect everywhere else. And I really feel like the whole notion of coups and like government revolutions is the next, the new normal. And in order to give you context for this, when Pluto was in this space, we had the French Revolution and the American Revolution. So like we are seeing maybe a digital version or an economic version of this take place where new economic world powers kind of surface, but we're no longer talking about it. It's like here. So we're Something having to adapt to that. I was talking you know, about, I just was Saturn looking Pisces. at, I was just looking mm -hmm. at Russia's shit. Mm. And I'm convinced that Putin's going to play games for like the next month and go back and forth and back and forth. Like yeah. my husband was telling me today, he was like, yeah, they like went all the way up there and then pulled back out. Now they're suggesting that he's just like fucking around and might, try to start some like digital warfare fucking infiltration shit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but when you look at the chart, it's not really going to happen until July or August. When and like, when and my concern is when it does happen, supposedly he's going to team up with another world power. China? So China's just like, come to mommy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, can you imagine? I mean, it's already been in the work, so. But see, that's where I feel like it's now WWE. It's like the, the, the news media is putting this versus this force, but behind closed doors, they're probably all commingling. There really could be that I think too. NATO's fucking full of shit. Oh, yeah, and the UN. Yeah. But that's just my opinion. It is a this. <laughs> I mean, so here's what's interesting. Let's talk about some positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Sexual relationships. Because... Uh, <laughs> What? Yeah, that I think that Mars been, Venus. Yeah, well, Mars exactly like that, and the Pisces energy. Like, there's been all this socio, collective, cultural talk of like sex, the manosphere, you know, being an alpha male or beta male versus woman, talking about social cultural issues, and I feel like all of this is going to climax, and a lot of people climaxing in bed and getting off the fucking internet and talking about sex issues and fucking each other. So I think this is going to be like... Mars and Venus are really conjunct. Amazing. I think this is the, the beginning of some very passionate love affairs. Yeah, for I real. I think you're going to see real. also With possibly... the most unlikely people too, like people who are outside your type or comfort zone and you're bridging like like the nerd and the... And the, and the 
prom queen getting together or the jock and and the, the uncool you know what i'm saying like and that's dumb right but like you know i love that you said that like passionate new love affairs that are kicking off but trying uranus the most unconventional type and well and like, mars and venus coming together are going to be divine masculine and feminine supporting each other and under the guise of capricorn it's being able to build something collectively so you're mm -hmm. going to get a lot of people who are fed up with this bullshit fed up with the system fed up with their jobs fed up with their relationships their marriages what they've been doing and it's going to have people so focusing on their passion that it's going to drive them to go in that direction we're going to see lots of people who will connect that I don't think would have ever connected unless they were put in their breaking point because yeah. the North Node's in Taurus. It's about sex, eating, feeling good, making money, making art, pleasure. Eating and sex. Right? Yes. Yeah, the most important things in the world, obviously, with yeah. the North Node in Taurus. Mm -hmm. And it, we want to have this experience. So in order for us to be able to do that... Of course, we have to have certain aspects between Venus and Mars really driving us to, hi, we both want to create the same thing. I mean, Mars is very much kind of serving Venus, too, because we've seen Mars kind of following up where Venus has been retrograding. So it's a lot of the divine feminine going, this is what we need for solid relationships, for strategy, for making money, resources for health. I, I, intuitively, I have this feeling that because of military mobilization that there's going to be a lot of love affairs, that there are people who are being stationed in places that they're not used to being stationed in, that perhaps there's like, you know, generals that are having like affairs and stuff with women. Mm -hmm. And there's this really strong, passionate kind of sexual thing going on behind closed doors mm -hmm. that we're not hearing about. And the fact that um, women may be coming into power and helping strategize and find peace or women may be using their divine feminine power to be able to relate and kind of cool the flames, temper the flames of Mars. But eventually, Venus is going to ghost Mars. By the time Venus gets up um, in degrees in Aquarius... It's out of there. Venus <laughs> is going to pass Mars and conjunct Saturn, and she's going to start ghosting Mars yep. come April. And, and start she'll... fucking with Mercury. Yeah. A real bug on the so like yeah, I mean it's it's a I love that you said women coming into power because one of the biggest social commentaries is that so many men are like women now, and it's really activating this like gender role reversal where almost to balance out all that hyper masculinity before that now is demonizing masculinity. It's like you're gonna see a lot more women being forward. As or well maybe as female leaders or a lot more female leaders absolutely for sure but i really do feel especially if you're pluto scorpio you're leading the charge pluto sag as well there's a new sexual revolution like i really do feel like paying for sex and escorts is not going to be as taboo as it used to be like prostitution will not be prostitution anymore like it's just it's already not in nevada so exactly well, in vegas it's already it's already happening socially with OnlyFans, with Instagram, with all these things, people selling their private parts, both men and women. So like we're gonna see a whole younger generation mainstream what used to be culturally taboo. Like we're getting ready for an entire sexual revolution that's just gonna happen under our nose. And it's just gonna it, everything that's been happening has led up to this. I think it's so important so it's really to work together up until early March also because by the time Venus and Mars leave Capricorn and they carry into Aquarius, they're going to conjunct Saturn. I think socially this is also going to be the media or particular powers trying to create some conflict revolving around um, like issues with like gender roles and battle of the sexes and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it's important to really focus on getting all that straight now. Like, once Pluto goes into Aquarius, I think we're going to start seeing on, like, birth certificates and other things that we don't assign gender at birth. I think that's going to eventually be a thing of the past. That's, that's true. the feeling that I have. Yeah, no, that, that, I could totally see that. And sure, yeah. people aren't going to immediately The parents tell, will assign their pronoun. <laughs> yeah, or the, the parents are going to tell people, you know, how they're going to identify. And I think we're going to start really breaking down gender norms and, like, really exploring more in regards to sexuality <coughs> and realizing it's not so taboo and we're not going to, like, teach little girls to play with Barbies and, like, little boys to play with, like, Tonka trucks. 
that it's just we're going to see sexuality as something that's like more fluid. And if you fluid, like what yeah. you like, great, awesome. Yeah. But we're not going to start forcing that from an early point. So you might actually see as Venus pulls away from Saturn and Mars that women come into power and we're going to start really looking at the Pluto return is like reevaluating the Pluto opposition that happened, you know, in the 40s or the 50s when it was like housewives were chained to a fucking stove and you were pregnant and barefoot making dinner mm. for your fucking husband waiting for him to come home and pay the mortgage like what's wrong with men staying home and raising babies and vacuuming the house being a and stay at home dad being emotional i mm. mean there's lots of men that would be like fuck it sign me up but they won't admit that admit because it, yeah. of their because of the gender, social cultural yeah. expectations yeah and then gender mm. expectations and because you know. men are supposed to play a provider role, but you have women who have high income positions. Like there's certain women I can date. I make enough money to take care of a family, but there's certain women who make millions more than I do. And if she she's not gonna stop the bag because I'm in my feelings about oh I'm a man, I might have to be the stay at home, work from home dad. You know what I'm saying? Versus people who I can provide for. It's no longer the old gender role. It's like it's like. Both people can work together and have jobs. Absolutely. So and it can be, interesting. there can be equality and there can be a sense of sharing in that. But I think that it's going to be a period of women coming more into masculine energy and feeling more yeah. assertive. And, and, men, and men coming into feminine energy is being looked at men becoming bitches or men being more like women. And there's an aspect to that. But what it really more is, is men embracing more femininity and men have never been allowed to do that. So it looks like they're going backwards. Right. When really, it's it's just a lot of things balancing out. You know what I mean? But when so, Pluto's in Aqua, it it's four signs away from Scorpio. So yeah. I think we're going to see a total transformation of the nuclear family where, you know, yeah, it's always been the man and the woman. And they have children. But huge. it'll be, you'll see polyamory or you'll yeah. see communal living or you'll see... You know, men that have multiple wives or women that have multiple husbands or yeah. people who get together and have kids and raise other people's children as a community. Right. Like, like it used to be. Well, it takes a, it village, takes a village to raise, to raise a, a child. child. Yeah. That's, that's Pluto Aqua. I love that she mentioned yeah. that in a nutshell. And that's all the beginning of the end. That's all that this year is a transition to that, you know? Maybe so. that's better though than having this like imposed perspective of what the American dream is meant to be. Mm -hmm. Looking at it more from like, well, when everybody contributes and maybe getting back to this communal living, obviously it's going to be brought about because of economic stress. So it's not that positive, but we may go back to like living with grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and raising each other's children. But it also might be the new norm that's like people may not get married. We're seeing decline. A lot of people in, in, may not get married. Yeah, yeah we're seeing a complete true. decline in marriage and divorce cases. We're seeing a complete decline in birth rates. People might go, well, it's too expensive and I lose my freedom or my, you know, my, my personal life from being attached to another person. So we're going to see people who are going to be more focused on living with other people and having community. But maybe it's having dogs rather than having children. I don't think there's I don't think there's anything wrong with segueing into a period of time where men are learning to be more vulnerable and giving men the opportunity to participate more in household stuff and helping raise children because without not a bad having thing. to sacrifice their masculinity cuz you know? a lot of men don't realize you can do that and still be a man yeah, and just still back in the fucking rugs way, bitch and still like fold my be laundry <laughs> <laughs> just, just fold my laundry I I'll that's why I bills. draw the line folding clothes I'm, I'm I'm a <laughs> that's hilarious yo. yo what if men could have the babies would not be great you pop that thing out i'll pay for it you know? No what comment. about that? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what happens, even though I do feel like it's going to be a little bit of a psych over the next two months before things kind of get locked down a little bit again to an extent, only to open up a little bit more back in June. Um, I have a prediction. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Jupiter going into Aries as soon as May, right? I think we're going to see the establishment of Kamala. Probably. I think we might see her become president. Probably. Yeah. I think the preparation is ready. So we'll it's going to be fucking crazy. When it happens, it's going to happen so It's also going to be a mass exodus, which we talked about a little bit, but we're going to see a mass exodus from the United States. I, Over the last two weeks, dozens of clients who are already 
wow. prepping for this. So you have to take into consideration Jupiter rules the ascendant. And Mars rules the fifth house. We're going to see tons of people that are going to be like, I'm out. Mind you, Kamala Harris will be president. We know this is true because <laughs> they play that emergency power bullshit where he was having a medicine and she was president for a little bit. You know, even though that was like... Whatever. I feel like that was like a sneak peek litmus test. Like, let's soft launch this, all right? Even if it wasn't like that. That to me, let me know something is gonna happen. <laughs> She's gonna be president. When he was like doing his colonoscopy, and she yeah. got sworn in. You're right. She got sworn in. Yeah. Well, they have to like do a temporary swear in in case something happens. And I remember. I didn't that. know they actually swore her in. Well, they I have it was to just in case he fucking dies. He's oh, got a tube up his ass. So, see, for a small <laughs> amount of period, she was she the was. first woman she was president the first. of the United States, which is just such a finesse. Like, that's so Libra. But, like, yeah, 12th house of the Scorpio sun. So, like, that's just a sneak peek of what's going to happen in a north node transit in his sixth house of health. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> in her 12th house. Well, it's your nice knowing, y'all. <laughs> And you know she's going to bring us to war. I mean, never mind. I don't know. It is I hope what it not. Is. No. I, I, I mean, oh, I don't. Uh, she say, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love Kamala and Hillary. I'm sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> I, I was thinking those are different lyrics, but, you know, mom is in beds. So those work, too. Mm -hmm. Let us know. What do you guys think? What's going to happen? How do you anticipate these transits playing out? What do you foresee um, happening in the United States? Enjoy your freedom while you guys have it. Take those masks <laughs> off. Get in your car. Whew. Run like the wind. I was wondering why the lift drivers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Run while like you the can wind. because yeah. it's... Breathe that air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was really thinking about that. I was like, wow, there used to be a time where I can go to a restaurant without a mask and they would let me in. <laughs> now like, we have I took to, it like, for granted. We have to retrain our faces. Because, right. like, the last two years of having masks on, I've had, like, habitual bitch face. And now I have to, like, I have to catch myself because usually my mask is on and I'm like, <laughs> and I can't do that anymore. So I have to be more aware of my facial expressions right. now. Right. That's beautiful. And not breathing through my mouth, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for supporting our shit show. We appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you for your likes, your comments, your shares, and Ooh. your memberships. You keep this whole thing running. We appreciate it, and we'll see all of you very soon. Take care. Peace.